Hello everyone and a very warm welcome. In this particular tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and share with you a challenge that I came across while working with Power Apps and Power Automate with a real customer. So here my friends, you see that you have got few images. The customer captured these images from Power Apps and stored it into SharePoint. The customer wanted to go ahead and print all the images on a single PDF. This sounds easy, right? Indeed, it's easy. So, so a typical solution would be to go ahead and get the files, initialize a variable and then create an HTML and then append each of the files or the images as the base 64 bit content. This is what I did. However, you see that I stumbled across an error. The error was it exceeds this but these many bytes. That means it exceeds the 100 MB limit. Okay, I went back into SharePoint and checked the total file size. It is indeed accessing the 100 MB limit. At this point, I could see that it actually did not even get the fourth images. That means that this is more related to the limitation as well as the base 64 is a culprit for adding a little bit of overhead. However, instead of blaming the base 64 and the limitation, let's create a solution out of it. So to create a solution, I'm going to go ahead and create a new flow. The solution is would be to go ahead and get the files, but get the files in such a way that we don't get the file content. So first thing, we need to get the files. So I'll say get files, SharePoint. Perfect, so files, I'll get it from this particular SharePoint instance. So copy this, put it in here, go ahead and get the files from the library. Now that I have all the images, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and first initialize a variable because I want to at the end create an HTML. So I'll say variable and I'll initialize a variable. I'll just say HTML str. Now this is awesome. However, how will we get the files? Now you'll say, Clevin, what if you go ahead and pass the URL directly like this maybe right this is the file URL but we need to understand that when we send the file to a third party for conversion or even if we create an HTML and download it on the computer the images will come broken because it will not have access to your SharePoint so that's another problem so we cannot put in direct images to work around the problem what I found is that we can use graph API so I'll go ahead and type in Graph Explorer. Okay, what is a Graph Explorer? Graph Explorer is a tool which helps you test API and endpoints. For example, I'm logged in as Alex. So here you see I can query all the records related to my own account. If I want to go ahead and so SharePoint list, I can enumerate all the list which are in the root site. Right, so this is this is awesome. So that being said, if let's think about enumerating the list from not the root site, but a specific site, let's say the Clavin demo site, right? So I want to enumerate all the list from the Clavin demo site. So when you go ahead and try to do that, we might have to go ahead and change the root. We need to change the root with the URL. So first and foremost, I'm going to pass in the root with my root URL and then I'm going to go ahead and append, okay, append the server relative URL of the site. And if I run a query right now, I only get the list specific to a site. So this is how you can play with the graph API. It returns you a response, which is in the form of JSON and you can go ahead and use parse JSON and process and process the files or get data out of this further. That being said, this is not about Graph API as a whole, right? This tutorial is not about Graph API, but I want you to still understand the basics. 
So what we need is a graph API, which looks like this. So we need to query the sites. We need to give it a site ID. Then we need to give it a list ID. And then we need to give it an item ID. That will go ahead and return a thumbnail of an image. Now bear with me and go ahead and let's try to fill in the blanks for these things. So firstly, I need to go ahead and give it a site ID. So site ID can be an ID or we can pass it the path like this. List ID, from where will I get the list ID? So I go into the list, I go into the library settings. I copy this URL, I say encode, decode, I use the first link that comes up, I'll paste it in, I'll say decode URL. The final thing within the curly brackets, the GUID is the list ID. So the list ID, I can just decorate it here. Now next what I want to do, I want to pass in the item ID. To get the item ID, I can go ahead and do a simple trick. If you see, I added the ID column. How did I add the column? I went to show and hide columns and checked the ID and the ID was visible. Let's say that I want to get the image on number 10, okay? And that's pretty much it, we built our URL. Now, if we go back into the Graph Explorer and paste this image out here and run the query, you see that it returns the URLs. It returns the URL for large, medium, and small. In this case, I just queried the large, but if I want the small one, I can run the query and it will return me a small image or a medium image. So what I'm going to do, I can go ahead and query this. The beauty of this URL, now if I copy this URL, open an incognito window and paste it in, it still renders my image. Isn't that awesome? Now, as this renders an image, we can use this URL in our Power Automate to go ahead and get the content, or you can say we can directly use the image uh, URL in the HTML. So if I'm confusing you, let's go back and let's understand how to first go ahead and use Graph API in the Power Automate. So I'll say AD Entra invoke http let's try to use the pre-authorized one okay i'll use the pre-authorized one and i will go ahead and put in the request i'll just paste this in and see if i get a response okay so this is the first thing that i need to do so i'll say a solution i'll save it and i'll test it Perfect. So my flow ran successfully. If I go ahead and look at the output, so if I look at the body of the output, I can actually take this body and paste it in a, you know, paste it in. And here you see that I have got the URL. So isn't that awesome? What I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this and keep it handy with me. In the meantime, I want to make this dynamic, right? So I don't want to hard code the ID, so I'm going to pass in the ID from here. As soon as I ID, it decorates it into and apply to each loop. The next thing that I want to do is I want to parse the JSON. So I'm going to click on parse JSON and I'm going to paste in the sample payload that I went ahead and copied and I'm going to pass in the body out here. Now, once I have the body, okay, once I have the body, what I can do is I can go ahead and access the variables. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add in a compose to see what can I access from this particular, what are the outputs of the parse JSON action. So it shows me like body medium, body URL, etc, etc. But if you look at but if you look at the payload properly, we want to access the value and the URL inside the value. How would we do that? To do that, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and maybe get the URL parameter. Now for this, I need to go ahead and write a formula. 
or an expression or an expression so let's go ahead and try to go x get the url out here so i'll go back into the compose expression paste in this expression so what i'm going ahead and doing i'm getting the output value and trying to fetch the large medium url okay large url out here in this case we don't have a large so i'll go ahead and fetch a medium url at this point this is good i can rename this compose to medium url now i have the medium url that's perfectly fine now what i want to do is i want to go ahead and maybe append variable to string right i want to loop through everything and create a single variable now i'll again go and type in html images okay so i can just click here and i'll just copy this line of code from here i'll go back into power automate i'll paste this in and the alternate name would be maybe something else maybe just the id for now and the url would be the output of the medium url action so this looks good to me i can recursively append it right and finally what i'm going to do i'm going to go ahead and store it as an html first to see if this actually works out well so i can just pass in the output of the variable next i'm going to go ahead and add another action this action would be the mohimbi action to convert the files to pdf you can use any action of your choice but i'll use mohimbi so i'll say convert html to pdf and i will pass in the same variable just say make it such that it looks good so print and i'll also send this as an email to see if the html output is correct so i'll just send html here i'll put in the name just say solution solution right this is a solution that we all created together so that's awesome i'll say add an attachment i'll name the attachment solution.pdf and i will go ahead and add the processed file content out here i will save this flow I will test this flow so i'll say manual and i'll say test let's go ahead and see the output in fact what i want to do is let let me make it a little bit more interesting right let me add many more images out here so let me just add some images let me add 21 more images so that it for sure exceeds the file limit perfect so the images are being added now that the images are being added what i can do is i can go ahead and click on continue and run my flow so it will have 27 images so let's see the output so here my flow has completed successfully if i go back and try to open the outlook you see that the solution is here and let me click on the pdf and here you see that the pdf has got all the images isn't that awesome i have added all the images into the pdf and it is really really awesome now that being said this is a solution for you and i hope that this will help you build your power apps and power automate more efficiently. Thank you. Have a great day and bye-bye.